Hi, dear students. I'm Antonello Marocco, the other teacher in this chemistry course. We will do together uh, exercises and uh, maybe someone of you could ask to himself why I have to do exercises when I already have to do uh, a lot of things of theory. Well, uh, I think the, the answer lies mainly in two reasons. The first, uh, it's a chance to point and uh, develop the, uh, the understanding of the arguments treated, explained by Professor Pansini during these lessons. And uh, I think this is a good thing uh, to pass the final exam. Uh, the second, you can learn some practical and uh, useful uh, models to calculate important characteristics regarding uh, the system, a system in which um, a certain uh, chemical reaction is taking place. So, without uh, uh, waste time, uh, let's get started. Exercise 1. Calculate the molar mass of NaCl. H3PO4. F A F E C L O four two C U S O four multiplying five. To oh, good. So we are starting from the very basis of the stoichiometric calculation. Uh, maybe uh, you know that stoichiometry is the branch of chemistry that are, that is involved in the uh, calculation of the amount of the quantity. Uh, of the substances participating in a chemical reaction. So, uh, in this case, we have to uh, define, to calculate something very simple. We have to calculate the molar mass that usually we indicate with the big M. The big M to distinguish, to distinguish this parameter from, this is the molar mass, the molar mass. And the unit of measurement of molar mass, you know, is a gram per mole, okay? Um, I would say, I would think that uh, we have to distinguish this parameter from the molecular mass or the relative molecular mass that is this way this is the relative molecular mass pure number. From now on, we will use this kind of symbols, okay? To define the molar mass, we need to do two simple things. The first, we have to calculate the relative molecular mass of these compounds. And after, we can add to this number the unit gram per mole. Simply this, it's very simple to do. Uh, 
I remember you that to calculate the relative molecular mass of any kind of compound, we only have to go and see to the periodic table and um, think the uh, atomic, the atomic mass of any uh, elements that are composing the compound and adding this number, considering them with the, the numbers, the coefficient that you can see in the formula of the compounds. Uh, why we can use the, the pure number because it's a relative number, as said uh, you by Professor Pansini, uh, I believe. Uh, why we could use this number to define the molar mass? Uh, there's a, a, an easy demonstration that help us to do to uh, uh, to demonstrate this thing, and we have to consider the we have to start from the definition of uh, the, um, the, U, the atomic mass unit. The atomic mass unit defined by the international system, you know, it's equal, is equal to 1 12th of the mass of the 12 isotope isotope of the carbon. So, um, the AMU, it's a well-known parameter that is equal to 1.66 multiplying 10 to 24 grams. It's a well-known parameter. So, Using this relation, I can, I can know uh, what is the, the mass in gram of uh, the 12 isotope of carbon by expliciting it. So I can write M of 12 carbon equal to uh, 12 multiplying AMU, the atomic mass unit. Perfect. And this is, this is expressed in grams. Perfect. But if I would like to know what is the weight of a mole of uh, the 12 uh, isotope of carbon, I need to multiply the mass in grams of a single isotope uh, by the uh, number of Avogadro, the Avogadro number. The Avogadro number that I can indicate in this way is equal to 6.022 multiplying 10 to 23. I would like to check something. Oh, yes. I was forgetting the minus. Uh, the minus. 10 is elevated to minus 24. Minus 24 because it's a very, very small quantity. Okay? So, okay. In this way, we can, we can see both the pages. And uh, I think it's more comfortable, comfortable for me and you. So. If I would like to uh, define the molar mass of the 12 isotope of carbon, I can write 
m of the 12 isotope of carbon equal to Twelve multiplying AMU, the mass of a single isotope of carbon, by the number of Avogadro. In this way, I can know the the, the mass of a mole of this kind, of this type of isotope of carbon. Perfect. But we already know uh, the value of this molar mass because uh, uh, it was defined by the international uh, system. The international system defined that this molar mass is equal to 12 grams. It's a part of the definition of the mole. I remember you that. We define a mole, uh, a, a, um, a part of matter that contains a number of entity that is equal entity in the atomic sizes, uh, of course, uh, and this number is equal to the number of the atoms that are contained in exactly 12 grams of the 12 isotope. So, what, que what we can uh, derive from this relation? Simply, we can simplify it. 12, obtaining that A and U is equal to one divided the number of Avogadro. Or we can derive that the Avogadro number is equal to one divided from A M U. This is a, a, a really good thing for two reason. We can we can uh, Remember only one of these numbers. You can remember the Avogadro number if you prefer, or you can remember the AMU if you prefer. And after you can derive the other one. Comfortable. But there's another, another, um, another thing very, very useful. We can use in this way as I said before, the uh, molecular, the relative molecular uh, mass of any type of substances to uh, define the molar mass of that substance. Why? Because if I would like to repeat this calculation for uh, another type of atoms or another type of uh, compound, I could obtain that. Uh, for example, uh, uh, let's consider iron. If I would like to calculate If I would like to calculate the molar mass of iron, I can write. Um, I go to the periodic table and I find out that the, uh, the, atomic, the atomic mass of iron, the relative atomic mass of iron, is equal to 55.85. So, is, if I multiply this number for A and U, I obtain the mass of a single atom of iron. And then, 
if I multiply the single F, the, the single mass of an atom of iron with the Avogadro number, I obtain the, the molar mass of, I, of iron. But before I demonstrate that the AMU multiplied by the Avogadro number, this, this product is equal to one. So, the molar mass of iron is exactly equal to the, the, mo the module of the molar mass of iron is exactly equal to the molecular mass. That is a pure number. But in this case, in this case, we have 55.85 gram per mole. Why gram per mole? Because AMU is measured in grams. And the Avogadro number is measured as number of entity on, that is, in practice, here there is one number of entity is not a, a, a unit, okay? Per mole. So, from the product, we derive the unit of measurement of this parameter, of this important parameter. I would like, I uh, would like to, to point this, uh, this fact. So, we can, we can come back to the, the real exercise. Is okay. Okay. They have to do this thing. Small. Okay, perfect. So now I can erase. No. Okay. Perfect. So we can start to consider the first compound, the sodium chloride. That uh, you know, it's uh, the chicken salt, the common salt, and uh, we can write molar mass of sodium chloride equal to we we need to. To calculate, of course, as said, the molecular mass of the sodium chloride, because it is the module of this parameter. So, to calculate uh, this molecular mass, we need to sum, to sum, to add the uh, atomic mass of any single elements that is composing the compound that appear in, in the formula. So in this case, I can write, I go to the periodic table and I can uh, check that the atomic mass, the relative atomic mass of sodium is equal to approximately 23 plus the atomic mass of chlorine. That is, I remember, uh, I remember this number, 35.45. All expressed in gram per mole, equal to 58 point 45 grams per mole as you can see it's a very easy calculation good so we can we can go ahead uh, considering the second compound 
Here we, we have phosphoric acid. Uh, you can recognize that this molecule is an acid uh, by the, the hydrogen that is the first element present in the, in the, in the formula. OK, so you can have it uh, with the, the different kind, the different types of compounds, but uh, Professor Pansini will show you in a better way. OK, so M, molar mass of H3PO4, acid, phosphoric acid, equal in this case, uh, we have coefficients different from one from the previous the previous compound. In this case, we have uh, coefficient equal to three in the case of hydrogen and equal to four in the case of oxygen and equal to one in the case of phosphorus. So. I have to consider exactly the number in which the element is present in the formula. So I can write the atomic mass of the hydrogen, we can approximate to 1.01, .01. really is 1.008, but uh, for our needing, it's good to use uh, uh, only two characters after the point, the decimal point, okay? Multiplied by three. Plus, the atomic mass of the phosphorus uh, multiplied by one, and so I can write it directly, 30 by nine, seven. I hope to remember well, <laughs> and uh, and then plus the atomic uh, weight of oxygen that is equal to 16 by the approximation uh, I said before, uh, multiplying 4, multiplying by 4. I'm putting, I'm putting the brackets only to, uh, to, to leave you a, a, a better, a better uh, uh, expression. Not only, not because uh, they are uh, really uh, necessary, okay? This sum is equal to, without wasting time, 90, exactly 98 gram, grams per mole. Also in this case, it is very simple. Perfect. I want to try to divide in the middle the board, okay? I was able to do <laughs> this thing. Perfect. We can consider so the, the third compound that is uh, also in this case a salt. How you, you can how uh, can you recognize uh, that th this is a salt? You have to check the, the, first, the first element in the formula. And it's a metal. And the, uh, the other things to, to which this metal uh, is bonded, it's no metal. When you find a metal with non-metal as the, the sodium chloride that you remember, this is a metal, this is non-metal. Uh, when you when you find this uh, this condition, uh, you are sure that the compound is is it's 
is a, a salt, okay? In this case, we have ferrous perchlorate uh, M of the ferrous perchlorate. is equal to the atomic mass of iron. It is equal to 5, 5.85 uh, plus. In this case, I can calculate the molecular mass of the term ClO4 and then multiply it by 2. So I can write 35.45 plus 17 multiplying 4, all multiplied by 2. So we obtain I did before. Two hundred fifty four point seventy five grams per mole. The last, the last compound is the copper sulfate pentahydrate copper sulfate pentahydrate, this, this is the name of this salt, multiplying, okay, here we are a particular type of salt because we have in the formula five molecules of water, this, this water is called uh, crystallization water or structure water because uh, the salt uh, exists with five uh, molecules of water inside the, the crystalline structure of the salt and uh, always compare in this way so we can uh, we can write exactly the formula of that compound. Uh, I would like to um, clarify that this is not uh, water that could uh, leave the, the substance at 100 uh, Celsius degrees because it is not water, um, it's, it's not free water because these molecules are inside the structure of the salt. So, the molar mass of this salt is equal to uh, molar mass of the copper that, uh, if I remember, 73.55 plus the atomic mass, the relative atomic mass of sulfur, that is equal to 32.06 plus 16, that is the atomic mass of oxygen, multiplied, point zero zero, multiplied by 4, of course. And here, we can consider the molecular uh, mass of the water that is multiplied by 5, as in the formula of the salt. Um, maybe doing uh, exercises and exercises, you will remember uh, very, very, very well the, the molecular weight of uh, water because it's 18.02, but in this, in this time I will write 
uh, I uh, entirely write the calculation. Five, that is multiplying 1.01 .01 multiplying 2 plus 16 equal to 249.71 grams per mole. So, as I said, it is a very simple calculation. Simple but powerful and useful uh, to, ev to evaluate, to uh, calculate the the amounts, the quantity of the substances uh, participating in a chemical reaction, but it will be a problem uh, in the next future. Uh, okay, we can go on. I erase. Exercise two. The title of this exercise is the basics of the stoichiometric calculation. This exercise, this exercise is divided in four points. A. How many moles of sodium does One mole of sodium chloride contain B. How many moles? of hydrogen does one mole of water contain C how many moles of hydrogen uh, how many moles of hydrogen does Two moles of ammonia contain and the last D. How many moles? of carbon does one mole of 
acetic acid contain the acetic acid as this formula CH3 C O O H contain perfect well this is a simple but very important exercise uh, very important to understand so we can start from the point the point a how many moles of sodium does one mole of sodium chloride contain the answer is one and we will see we could see by the coefficient of the uh, of the coefficient in particular of the sodium that is one and is equal to the coefficient uh, of the uh, chlorine that is one two but um, I would like to formalize what I have said, uh, written something useful and in the right way. So I think you, I could, I could use a free page and uh, point A. I can write something that uh, use the uh, so named stoichiometric um, ratio that is uh, something that we will use in calculation of the, the amounts of, uh, of the substances in a chemical reaction but we can use here too in, this, um, in the same way by writing the compound was this one. I can write that the mole of sodium divided by the mole of sodium chloride. I'm considering the whole the whole compound, the whole formula. Okay? And this one is equal to to define uh, uh, the, the mole of the sodium uh, I have to check I have to see on the formula and uh, considering the coefficient of the element this one and this coefficient is equal to 1 the mole of the formula is always equal to 1 because the formula is 1 the unit of formula is 1 so, I can derive that the mole of the sodium are equal to the mole of the, the compound containing it. In this case, the exercise, the text of the exercise told me that the, the mole I have to consider uh, are 1. Is one, one mole of yes, one mole of sodium chlor uh, chloride. So this is mole of sodium chloride equal to one mole, and and so here I can write equal to one mole. I have formalized what I have said only reading the formula. Perfect. Now we, we can consider the second point, B. The substances, the substance was water. And uh, the question was, how many moles of hydrogen does one mole of water contain? Perfect. The data of the text is that the mole of water are equal to one mole and in the same way I did before for this compound I can write mole of, uh, of 
hydrogen on mole of water of the formula equal to in this case the coefficients of uh, the hydrogen inside the, the molecule of water is 2 so here I can write 2 divided by 1 always 1 as I said before so I can make explicit the unknown parameter that I put over to be uh, countable in the explicitation, explicitation. So, mole of hydrogen equal to 2 multiplying mole of water equal to the mole of water uh, R1. So, here I obtain two moles. It's very simple. See, uh, the question was, how many moles of hydrogen do two moles of uh, ammonia, ammonia contain? So, uh, I can write moles of ammonia, that is the data, equal to two moles. And then I can write mole of hydrogen on the uh, mole of the, the compound, the formula containing it, equal to. In this case, the coefficient of hydrogen is equal to 3. So I can write here 3 on 1, divided by 1. And then, moles of hydrogen equal to three times the mole of ammonia equal to the moles of ammonia are equal to two. And so in this case, I obtain three multiplying two equal to six moles. Six moles. Perfect. The last point, D. Uh, we are considering as, uh, acetic acid, the test formula, and one mole of acetic uh, acid, so mole of CH3COOH uh, equal to one mole. And then I have to check the carbon. So mole of carbon on mole of acid equal to here I have two atoms of carbon inside this formula. These two carbon are distinguished in this formula because this is uh, an organic compound, a simple but organic acid. And this is the, the structure formula. And so I cannot uh, uh, write C2, it's wrong, okay? I have one, two atoms. So here I can write two divided as always by one. So the mole of carbon in this in this case is equal to simply two, two mole. Very easy. Okay. Exercise three. Another very simple exercise. What is the average mass?
in grams. of the chlorine atom this is a very easy calculation that we we have seen before when uh, i did the the, the demonstration uh, in the starting of the the lesson and uh, it's very easy very easy to do because we only have to consider the relative atomic and the average, relative and average, uh, uh, considering the isotope, uh, the uh, atomic uh, mass of a chlorine, so I can write um, M, R, R, of Cl it is multiplying A and U. Simply this equal to this is this has a module equal to the uh, this is equal to not module uh, 35.45 it is multiplying 1.66 multiplying 10 to minus 24 grams. This is a pure number. So we obtain, I do the calculation, the result is 5.88. Multiplying 10 elevated to minus 23 grams. Perfect, yes. Very simple. And you can do this for uh, any type of element, of course. We could know the mass in gram of uh, every type of atoms of elements. Maybe it's better to, to shift the page of the board. Okay. Exercise four. How many Moles make up ten grams of how many moles make up ten grams of copper symbol. See you. How many moles make up 10 grams of copper? This exercise is interesting because uh, lead us to uh, to consider a very very important relation. The relation is this one: is the relation that that make that makes. A link between uh, the measurement of the quantity of the, the matter with the measurement of the quantity of the substances as the moles are defined by the molar mass and it's a very important relation that permits us to to do calculation in stoichiometry using the moles and to uh, deriving from this calculation the mass in grams of the, the substances. So in, uh, in a chemical lab we can uh, weigh 
the quantity of the substances uh, by uh, the grains and, and not di directly uh, with the moles. So, in this case, uh, what's the question? Okay, in this case we have that the mass of copper is equal to 10 grams. So, I have to know the molar mass of copper, of course. I go to see on the periodic table and I find out that the molar mass of copper is equal to 63.55 grams per mole. And so, I can use this relation expliciting the unknown parameter that in this case is the mole. I can write that the, the moles of copper are equal to the ratio between the mass of copper expressed in grams and the, the molar mass of copper expressed in grams per mole. So I obtain that this ratio is equal to 10 divided by 63.55 and uh, the units are gram divided by gram per mole. I can do this, I can simplify the grams and obtaining, I see, let me see the number, the number is 0 0.157 moles. Okay. Five. How many atoms are contained are contained in ten grams? of copper perfect also in this case our data is mass of copper equal to 10 grams 10 grams 10 grams Ah, I can uh, I can leave the copper. It was the carbon, but uh, we can leave the copper. Okay, it's not a problem. So, no, it's better to 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 put the carbon because I didn't do these calculations, and so. Uh, I, I need the calculator in, in this moment. I don't want to lose time. Uh, so of carbon, okay, not Cu, but only C. Perfect. So uh, in stoichiometry, in the stoichiometry calculation, as uh, said many, many times, uh, we only use the moles, never the mass directly. So, when I start an exercise, um, I can think that the first, the first thing I could do is to calculate the mole of, uh, of the, uh, the element, of the compounds uh, that are regarding the, the, the exercise. Um, 
I, uh, I don't I don't do a mistake for sure. So I have to count uh, the 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 matter and not to weigh the matter. So the mole of carbon are equal to 10 divided by 12.011. I can, I can leave well, one, one. In this case, I leave this one because uh, I did uh, the calculation with this, uh, this number. OK, perfect. And uh, equal to 0 0.8. Three, two, mole. So now I would like to uh, to define how many atoms are contained in this number of moles, and it's very simple to calculate this quantity because I can write number of atoms equal to the mole multiplied by the number of Avogadro. That is the number of atoms that are contained in only one mole. So, and in fact, the, the unit uh, become, here I have mole that is multiplying one on mole. Um, I can write better. Number of uh, entities. Entity, In this case, these entities are atoms, but uh, they could be ions in or uh, molecules, as said. So I can write directly atoms okay equal to I read the number five point zero one zero that is multiplying. 10 uh, to 23 atoms. Here, I remember you. I jumped uh, a, a passage. I remember you that Na is equal to 6, uh, uh, 0 0.022. It's multiplying 10 to uh, 23 and these are 0 0.832 so if we multiply the moles of uh, certain elements or substance by the Avogadro number, we obtain the number, the exactly the number of the particles we are considering. Okay. What we can do? Well, we can do this one. Uh, six. Which of the next, which of the next samples has the greatest Number of 
of atoms so we have five grams of lithium a metal five grams of steel and we can write here five grams of cobalt okay which of the next sample says the greatest number of atoms so um, before uh, I start the uh, the solving of the, the exercise I would like to uh, I have a question for you um, do you think we need to do calculations to answer to this question Yes, I have heard, I'm joking, um, you're right, no, we don't need to do calculations to, uh, to give the answer to this question. Why? Because we have the same amount in grams of, for the three metals, lithium, steel and uh, cobalt. So what means? Means that if I go to the periodic table and see uh, the characteristics of these three metals, the position in the table and the characteristics of, the, of these three metals, um, I can understand that the lithium is the lightest of the three metals, the lightest, the steel, is the heaviest of the three metals and the cobalt has a mass that's that um, uh, a mass in the middle of the other two so if we consider that the lithium is the the lightest of the, the three metals we are considering uh, we can we can uh, answer that uh, the greatest number of atoms uh, are contained in lithium because it requires a, a greatest, the greatest number of atoms to obtain the same mass of the, uh, the other two metals. If we consider the steel that are the heaviest metal of the three, uh, it requires uh, uh, a lower, the lower number of atoms to obtain the same mass of the three. Of course, cobalt requires a number uh, in the middle of the two. So uh, we don't need to do calculation to uh, answer to this question. And. Uh, uh, of course, if you want to train with this kind of calculation, you can do at your home, uh, and uh, I think it's a, uh, a good thing, okay? We can do this one, okay. Okay. Exerc Exercise seven. 115 grams of a pure element contains Three point zero one one multiplying ten to twenty four atoms one 
what type of element we are talking about Okay, now we are considering a pure element, not a compound. So, uh, this, this is an exercise, in my opinion, is kind, because show shows how uh, you, you can recognize an element by its molar mass. So, the aim of this exercise is to calculate the molar mass of the unknown element using this number after to uh, compare uh, comparing the, the, the number we obtained by the, the calculation with the, the atomic uh, masses reported on the periodic table and in this way we will uh, understand what kind of element we are talking about perfect so I know that this, this mass contains this large number of atoms, but in the, I need to uh, define the mole of the, the element. How can define the mole starting from the number of the atoms? I have to remember that, as we uh, wrote before, number of atoms are equal to the product the product uh, between the um, uh, moles and the number of Avogadro the Avogadro number so in this case we can use this relation expliciting the unknown parameter that is the mole. So we, I can write the mole equal to number of atoms divided by the Avogadro number, obtaining, I hope I did this calculation, uh, Yes, 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 good. So I can, I can write 3.011 multiplying 10 elevated to 24 divided by 6.022 multiplying 10 elevated to 23. Three, I hope it's clear. It's better to erase and rewrite. Okay. This ratio is equal to uh, five. Exactly five moles. Five moles. And so now I can calculate the the molar mass of this unknown element, M is equal to the mass in grams divided by the moles, equal 115 divided by 5, and the result is 23 grams per mole. So, now I have this number, I take the periodic table and I could uh, recognize the, uh, the, element, the element as to be the sodium.
if we have a compound, it's not so certain this result. But if we have a pure element, okay, we can use this, uh, this procedure to recognize, uh, to recognize uh, the element. Okay. I think I think it's the number eight. Calculate the grams of the element H and we could write in this way the elements H and O that are contained in one gram of water. Okay. So the data the data from the text is mass of water equal to one gram. Now, without thinking about so much, we find, we find the moles of water. And then we can start to think moles of water are equal to the mass of water divided by the molar mass of water. This ratio gives one divided by, if you remember, uh, the molar mass of water is 18.02. 1.01 multiplied by 2 plus 16, that gives 18.02. Equal um, I have to do this this calculation. We have calculated the, the moles of the water, okay? And they are equal to zero point zero five 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 moles. Perfect. Now we can use what we we did before in the, the previous exercises uh, because we need to calculate the, the, the amounts of the, the two elements that are uh, composing the molecules of water. And what, uh, what I can write? I can write um, to the respect of the hydrogen death. The moles of hydrogen on the moles of water, this ratio is equal to 2 on 1, as seen before. So, the mole of hydrogen are equal to two times the mole of water and exactly this number so we have to multiply two to zero point zero zero five 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 in this in this way we obtain uh, let me read we obtain uh, okay perfect 
um, zero, uh, here I don't, I don't have to read zero, point uh, uh, zero, one, 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 0 0.0111 moles. To the respect of the oxygen, I can write, I can write here, mole of oxygen on the moles of water. We are still using the stoichiometric ratio. And this ratio is simply equal to one on one in practice one so I can write that the mole of oxygen are equal are equals to the mole of water and so they are 0 0.0555 moles So, now it remains only to, to define, to, cal to calculate the mass of these two elements using their molar masses. So, I can put the bird in this way so we can see the numbers and I can write the mass of hydrogen that is contained in one gram of water is equal to this product okay uh, the molar mass of hydrogen is 1.01 that is multi uh, multiplying the mole of uh, hydrogen that we calculated before equals, equals to this number and in this way I obtain we obtain uh, 0 0.11 Two. Zero point one one two. Okay. Grand. Grand. In the same way, for the oxygen, I can write um, uh, the uh, the product uh, between the moles of the oxygen that we found. Uh, were equals to the, the moles of the, the water and so 0 0.0555 multiplying the 16 the molar mass uh, of oxygen and this uh, the result is 0 point eight 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 grams so now we can uh, we can say that in one gram of water are contained zero point one hundred twelve grams of uh, hydrogen and zero point eight 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 grams uh, of oxygen and um, the, this kind of, of calculation um, could, could be performed also in, the, also in this way when I, when I found the mass of the hydrogen I simply can write mass of oxygen equals to mass of water minus the mass of hydrogen and we obtain of course the same the same number zero point I can write uh, in, uh, uh, in 
a better way. The mass of water is one gram minus zero point one one two equals to zero point eight 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 gram. Of course. If we want is if we would like to express these results in percentage in percentages um, it's very simple to do because we can we, oh, okay is here <laughs> we can simply write in this way h equal in percentage equals to uh, the mass of hydrogen divided by the mass of water multiplying 100. That is the base of the percentages, of course. And so we obtain, now it's very simple the, the calculation because we obtain 0 0.112 divided by 1 multiplying 100 and it's equal to 11.2 uh, percent in the same way oxygen is the mass of oxygen divided by the mass of water multiplying 100 equal to uh, 0. Point point 8, 8, 8, divided by 1, multiplying by 100, equal to 88.8%. And in this way is very useful, in this mode is very useful because the percentage are, are not connected to uh, a certain quantity uh, of uh, the matter, of the substance. So we can define in, uh, in uh, any kind, in uh, any uh, amount of water, uh, what is the amount inside of hydrogen and of oxygen, simply considering these per percentages. Good. Now we can do, I think, the last one. I don't remember the number, but it's not important. It seems to me nine, but I can, uh, I can do a mistake. It's not important. Calculate the way the weight per percentage of nitrogen in the I touched the board with my paper uh, in the ammonium nitrate Let us formula NH4 and O3. Good. This exercise is very similar to the previous, to the previous one, but it's different for uh, uh, one thing. We don't have uh, a mass, a data regarding the mass. Uh, given by the, the text of the exercise, but it's not a problem because the exercise 
is asking to us to uh, define the percentages. The percentage, it's only one of the element uh, we are considering because the percentage, and so the percentage are not connected with any, uh, with any uh, quantity in particular. So I can set, I can decide to consider uh, a certain quantity that is comfortable for me, for my calculations, and then, and after, I, I can proceed with my calculation obtaining uh, the, the, the result uh, is asking me, is asked uh, to me. So, that was ask, asked to me. Um, so, we can do it in two, two different uh, procedures. We can use two different procedures. And I will show uh, both the procedures, so you can decide what you prefer. The first, I can uh, decide to consider a certain quantity of the ammonium nitrate. Ammonium nitrate it's a, is a salt. It's a, a particular kind of salt. And uh, I, I say particular because uh, it hasn't a metal uh, um, uh, in the uh, uh, as a first element, but as this uh, group of atoms, NH4, that in you you uh, you will you will see is an ion, but it's not important in this moment. Um, you can remember that this is a particular type of salt in which there isn't a metal. Okay, uh, so, I write, I consider one hundred grams of this salt. Why one hundred? Because it's one hundred, it's the base of the percentage, and so it's is the uh, the quantity that is more comfortable to use in this calculation. You will see. So now I have to uh, calculate the molar mass of the ammonium nitrate, and the molar mass of this salt is equal to. Um, there are two atoms of nitrogen, so I can write the molar mass of nitrogen, 14.02, approximated of course, multiplied by two, because the atoms are two, plus um, four atoms of hydrogen, 1.01 .01 multiplied by four. I can put brackets, not, not because uh, they are really necessary, but to, to let you see in the better way, in a better way. And um, plus, there are three atoms of oxygen in this uh, uh, compound. This is not a molecule compound. It's not a molecular compound. Uh, okay. 17, that is multiplied by three. Equal to, let me see the result. Okay. Eight, eight, eight point zero five grams per mole. Yes. So now the mole, the moles of the salt are equal to uh, 
the ratio between the mass of the salt that I have considered equals to 100. So I write the mass of the salt divided by the molar mass of the salt. I write here. equal to 100 divided by this number. The ratio is equal to uh, 1.25 moles. Good. Okay, now we have the moles of this uh, compound. So we can count, we can define, we can calculate the moles of nitrogen as the text uh, is, is asking to us. So I can write, try to put in this way okay. So now I can write moles of nitrogen on the moles of the salt okay equals to 2 because the atoms of the nitrogen in the salt are 2 are 2 as said so I obtain that the moles of nitrogen are equals to 2 multiplying the moles of the salt and H4 and O3 ammonium nitrate and so I have found that the moles of the salt are equal equal to 1.25 so I can write that the mole of nitrogen are equals to 2 multiplying 1.25 obtaining 2.50 moles. Perfect. So now I can calculate the mass of the nitrogen using always the same relation, fundamental relation. Equals to nitrogen as molar mass equals to 14.02 multiplying 2.50 and uh, the result is 35.02 grams. 35.02 grams. Now, you can understand why I have used 100 as base for my calculation. Because now I have to express the percentage of the nitrogen and I can find that. Nitrogen in the salt, in terms of uh, the mass, is equal to the mass of nitrogen divided by the mass of the salt multiplied for 100. But this mass is equal to 35.02 divided by 100 multiplying 100. So, I obtain immediately the, the percentage without doing any calculations because I have chosen uh, the right, the right base, the right base for, for the calculation. So, the result is 35 point 
No. Okay, this is uh, a modality, a mode to, uh, this is uh, um, the first mode to, um, for the resolution of this kind of, uh, of problem. But there is uh, an, uh, an alternative uh, procedure that I really prefer because it's faster and more uh, and gives results more uh, precise results. So, um, I go back, I go back to the text and I think I can erase this, uh, this write, this writing. What I say for the raising is the, the molar mass of the salt. I'm writing uh, salt and not the formula because uh, it's too much long and uh, uncomfortable to, to, to write. Um, so, I can obtain the same result more, uh, more precise result, precise result, uh, doing it in this way. I have only to consider the molar mass of the, uh, of the compound uh, I'm considering and of the element I'm considering, in this case, the nitrogen. But uh, considering uh, the uh, the molar mass of the element, in the number, uh, it is, uh, it appear, it appears in the formula. I will, uh, let me show you. So I can write that the percentage of N could be equal to the molar mass of nitrogen but multiplied by the, uh, the exactly the number the element is uh, present inside the, the formula. In this case, is two, one and two. So, molar mass of nitrogen multiplied by two divided by the molar mass of the entire formula in this case, of the salt, of the ammonium nitrogen. Here I, I write all, all the name of the salt multiplied by 100. With only this calculation, I can obtain the result with um, a shorter procedure and more precise procedure because I I have to do uh, less 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 passages. Every passage gives us uh, some approximation, a little mistakes that that in the are summing in the final result. So if we do this. Uh, here I can raise. If we do this uh, operation, uh, here the molar mass of nitrogen is 14.2 multiplied by 2, exactly the quantity present in the formula, divided by 8 by a point. 
um, uh, zero, I, f I forget, uh, zero five, multiplying one hundred. What I obtain is exactly thirty five point zero zero percent. So I did the same exercise in a very faster way and more precise way. So uh, I am more confident with this result uh, the, despite the before. Okay, dear students, if you want, we will see in the next lesson. Uh, have a nice day. <laughs>